What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be talking about hospitality, what it means, what it looks like, how it's commanded, and how the church is cultivated through it. So let's go. Romans 12, 13 is kind of where we get a lot of the basis of hospitality. Also Peter, Hebrews talks about it. But what Paul says in Romans 12, 13, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. This is one of the things that we see in the church is that we should seek to show this thing that's called hospitality. We uh, notice through scripture is we see it a lot. It's not just like one time. It's said over and over and over. What does hospitality mean? Hospitality in the original form means to seek to show right? Love to strangers. In a sense, it's like showing people that are outside of your home, you're showing them love by bringing them in. It's really the the picture we get in the gospel. When we think of hospitality, this is really what God did when he brought us into his family. God, He we were far off. We were enemies mm. of God because of sin. And then God brought us in through Christ and now we get to fellowship and dine with him. He says, seek to show hospitality, right? Seek it. So when you see that word, Noel, seek, what does your mind go to? Search, do it. Seek is kind of like seeing, you know? Mm -hmm. So how do you see something? You experience it, right? you know? And a lot of times with hospitality, it's something that you have to see and you learn, like when we first uh, learned about hospitality, it was actually a long time ago, our pastor and our pastor's wife showed us hospitality, what it looked like and how simple it could be. I remember her inviting us over for dinner. She had four kids at the time. She just invited us over and she would just always make pancakes for us. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like right. for dinner. The food didn't matter. It was the relationship that was cultivated through it. The, the coming together is yeah. what was, um, what we remembered, not the pancakes. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's an important fact. So first thing we see is like, okay, hospitality. Like, I feel like it's one of those things that it's just really forgotten in our culture because people really don't think about it. Like they think, oh, well, I'll have somebody over for a birthday party. I mean, maybe a movie night or something like that. And when the Bible speaks about hospitality, it's so much more than that. It's just a regular thing. And I think where we get this picture is we see the early church in Acts 2. This is like when the church started, right? This is right from Pentecost. This is, you know, when the Holy Spirit and dwelt 3,000 people and then the church just exploded. And from that point, what do we see? We are mm -hmm. just meeting in each other's homes. And it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers, and all came upon every soul. And many wonder signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together mm -hmm. and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. There's just this picture you see through the scriptures is like when you come together, you bring people in your homes, right? It's just what they were doing. It's just an organic way and a transparent way to invite somebody into your life, build a relationship. Our God is relational. It's a true genuine way of serving somebody and building a relationship with them and even inviting them into your home, even if it's chaotic, even if you have a little kids, you know, running around and it's not the easiest thing to do or even if you're financially strapped, yeah. but just to invite them in, it's just saying like, I love you, come into my home. Mm -hmm. I trust you, I want to know you more. And what we believe is what happens through hospitality and express of the church when we read this in Acts 2 where they were coming together well remember they were had all things in common they were together they were meeting in each other's homes what this does is that it starts with maybe physical food where you're having people over for dinner but then it starts to go deeper than that mm -hmm. right if you're having somebody in your home all the time and you're bringing families in what you start to show is you show love for them mm -hmm. and then they're showing love for you and not only does that just spread because now they want to do it but really what happens is is that that meal that you guys had was not just physical mm -hmm. it starts to be spiritual now you're not just feasting over you know pancakes mm -hmm. but now you're feasting over the word and or prayer or whatever it may be and i think what god starts to do he well, starts you to, start to become vulnerable yeah right 
right and then you and what really happens is is it, that's where real relationships start right mm -hmm. like you know normal just seeing people once a week and, and doing the normal chit chat um, you know how was your week oh week was good you know hard week whatever but once you have somebody in your home and it's a regular thing it changes everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, now you're 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 talking about deeper things. You're not yeah. just talking about oh well, you know, because I, I just have to do this quick conversation because we just met each other at you know Sunday church or whatever, you know. You're getting uh, a deep relationship. Right. You, you know, it's not it's no longer a surface relationship. And you invite somebody into your home where you live, where your life is, it goes deeper. It's yeah. like no more surface relationship. Let's go deeper. Like let's be a family. Yep. Yep. So I think um, number two on top of this is that Hebrews tells us to not neglect, right? So don't neglect to show hospitality. And the word neglect really means don't forget, right? It's just something that like we can just forget to do, yeah. you know, and because it's maybe it's just uh, you're we, busy. Yeah, we get busy or whatever. But really what the Bible is telling us is don't forget to do this. Um, not only you should seek to do it, but don't forget to do it because if you neglect it, you're actually neglecting something very, very special and very sweet, which is blessings on the household, blessings to relationships that you have with people. And I think it doesn't even have to be pancakes. Like I think if you're truly on a budget or you just want some, to invite somebody over, like inviting them over for a play date, I think it can be that simple. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a whole feast where a mom who is, you know, has children <laughs> and, and all this stuff going on has to uh, be burdened with um, being a chef that can right. be for later in life that can discourage anybody right yeah. it's just like oh we can't I have, have anybody over yeah because we got to make this huge meal it's mm -hmm. just like you know what if people are coming over your house for a meal <laughs> like because you're gonna make this special meal like I don't think that people look to look for that I just think that if people are invited over and it's like listen I want to I want to love on you I want to have some time some fellowship with you I think that's really what what really points out to someone in their heart and with their mind like wow these people really love me they want to be around me you know and that's it not about like oh how good was that you know Italian food you mean yeah you know? it's more it's not about performance it's about transparency and <laughs> um, just letting love abound yeah amen you seek it and you don't neglect it right mm -hmm. so it was funny like I had my friend over for a play date and she was talking her and I were talking about um, having our family over for like a holiday and how much work it is it kind of burns you out with like you know life is busy you got the little kids and and then like cooking like for like a Thanksgiving or like an Easter meal you know it can be a lot and um, and I've done that before um, but she was saying how she's going to be doing it for Easter for her family. It's really cool listening to her because it was just like her fear and reverence for God from the heart was so real because she was like, you know, I, I was really like grumbling about it. But then the Holy Spirit convicted me and was like, okay, I shouldn't be, I should show hospitality without grumbling, like how, you know, and it made me think of First Peter, how it specifically says that in First Peter, show hospitality without grumbling. Yeah. So she said, even though I was doing it outwardly, nobody knew my heart, God knows my heart. And so I, I you know, she said that she's wrestling with that and, and fighting, waging war against that. She's like, I need to show hospitality in this way. This is the way God's calling me to show hospitality, you know? So I thought that was really encouraging to hear her heart in that because I know that I have grumbled and complained about showing hospitality before too so that's why in certain seasons it does have to just be simple it's just about loving on people and inviting them into your home it builds a trust and a bond when you do that um, it puts your guards down puts everyone's guards down and people start to become vulnerable it doesn't have to be a whole production but sometimes it is once once in a while it is when we we are freed up more we can do make more of a production of it it, um, and really serve use it as a way of a service like I'm gonna feed you so well like come over I just want to feed your bellies and I'm gonna make delicious food and that's for a certain season but sometimes we have to do that when God calls us to do it it's just about not grumbling okay I know God is calling me to this right now I'm not gonna grumble in my heart um, because God knows the hearts of man you know so that's good so that's number three don't grumble right that first mm. Peter says that don't grumble to show hospitality. So first, number one, seek it out, right? 
literally look for some opportunities that have God has placed in your life, some people, some relationships that, okay, whether it be family or friends or neighbors or whoever it may be, seek those people out to bring them into your home. Number two, don't neglect it. Don't forget it. So when you're seeking, I believe that you're not going to neglect it because you're constantly looking for it. So you're going to get that one, you know, pretty much uh, well taken care of. And number three, don't grumble, right? We can grumble because we put too much on ourselves. Mm, we can grumble mm -hmm. because we just think we have to do a certain thing. We can grumble because our house is going to get really dirty and we don't, we got to clean it up and whatnot. But honestly, it's all worth it. It yeah. really is. Like you're never going to have a house full of people and, you know, have them over and it's going to be like, man, I wish we never did that because you're building relationships. Like if you truly want to build relationships with people and you want to see, uh, you know, uh, Christ through these people and you want to love Christ by having these people over your house, you're going to benefit from it every time. You're not going to really regret it. Sorry, it's can I, can I interrupt right now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's crazy too how um, easily your house cleans up. Yeah. <laughs> like I've had so many kids in my house at one time and um, I was doing it like every week. Everybody would leave. My house would be in shambles. I'm telling you, sometimes my patio door would be off the hinges. Like, I mean, yeah. seriously, like there was crayons on the wall. There was like mm -hmm. mounds of dirt. And I am a very obsessed. The Lord has sanctified me, but I am a very obsessive compulsive person when it comes to cleanliness. But the more kids you have, the more you let go of that. It's just so funny. Like every time somebody leaves, it takes me maybe an hour to just clean up my house, do a nice cleaning and my house is like nobody was even there. Kenny and my mom used to always like laugh at me every week after we'd have a bunch of families in our house and everybody would leave and my mom and I would clean up the house together and Kenny would help sometimes too. And um, and after everybody was gone, it was like my quote, I had to say it every week. I'm like, it was like nobody was even here. It's true. And it's so true. Like it's so easy to clean things up. And yeah. you know what? If somebody puts something on your wall that you, you know, you can't wash off, a little bit of paint. It's just a house you know yeah it's just stuff i mean god commands us and that's what we always got to go back to is the scriptures we always got to go back to what has god said god has told us to do something so we be obedient you know um you know it, we can fight you know we could fight certain things and say i don't i don't want to do this or i don't want to do that but if god's word tells us to do it he's telling us to seek it out he's telling us not to neglect it and he's telling us not to grumble about it like we just got to do it you know and, and and the thing is is that it's not that god gives us commands because he wants to be burdensome mm -hmm. i mean that's exactly what jesus said he's like my yoke is easy you know, my burden is light. God doesn't want to give us more commands so that it just burdens us down. He's actually giving us because he gives us a blessing through those commandments. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't, you know, God tells me not to lie. Well, well, lying's fun. No, it's not because there's so much stuff and repercussions from lying that I got to deal with. So when you're outside of Christ, lying is fun. Yeah. Okay. It's easy. But when you're in Christ, we see the blessings through not lying, for example. We see the blessings through hospitality. Um, My friend said that. She said, Christianity is simple, not easy. Yeah. So it's like, it's easy to lie, right? It's easier to take shortcuts, right? It's easier not to have people at your house. It's, But... Christianity is simple. It's simple. It's simple to have people in. It's simple to just tell the truth. Like we overcomplicate things. Like yeah, it's, it's actually very simple, but um, it doesn't always mean it's very easy. Right. And sometimes it's just dying to self and then it's sanctification, you know? Yeah. It gives us grace to provide for the moment. This isn't really to tell everybody like, go do this, you know? I'm just saying like, it was on my heart because I think it's something that's just missing in our culture. You know, I, I don't think a lot of people think about it anymore. And um, we just wait to do it. You know, we wait. We wait to say, wow, I'm going to do it at the right time in the right season or the right month. It's never going to be the right day. It's never going to be the right week. Your life never, is never going to be perfect. It isn't. It's just open your door and say, hey, guys, come on in. I'm going to make some whatever scrambled eggs i don't yeah, know doesn't we, matter i'm doing a, a little study with the kids in the U version bible and it's about being more like jesus the number one way to be more like jesus that the kids are learning right now is cultivating relationships mm. so this is a way to cultivate a relationship yeah. is through being hospitable yeah just try seeking it out don't neglect it and don't grumble so 
and the Lord will bless. He's blessed us. Um, we've seen other uh, Christians that have been immensely blessed by doing this. And I think it really gives a great expression of the church. And it's living the Great Commission, loving God, loving others, and making disciples. That's it. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. <laughs>